Hey guys, this is Joey. I'm coming to you to bring you a story about cell phones. As a cell phone user, as a uh, card-carrying member of the cell phone fan club, I was pretty horrified to learn about the effects, the long-term effects of cell phones on the brain and on the body, and I wanted to share with you those effects and share with you an interview that I saw from a friend of mine in Southern California so that you could really be aware of what these cell phones are doing to you and to your friends and to everybody around us. So be prepared to be shocked and I hope to see you all soon. Thanks. Bye. Hi, uh, this is Friday night, June 25th, and I'm in the home of Susan Foster in Rancho Santa Fe. And uh, Susan is here this evening with Ellie Marks from San the San Francisco area. And Ellie was a, a, one of the uh, powers behind passage in San Francisco uh, a week or two ago about uh, requiring cell phones manufacturers to uh, place the um, power of the radiation on the packaging so that people know how powerful the radiation is being emitted from their uh, cell phones. And how you uh, got involved in this uh, issue and what happened in San Francisco? Well, I got involved in this about two years ago. I never thought that I'd be studying non-ionizing radiation, which is the same radiation the cell phones and the cell towers give off. Uh, my husband, unfortunately, was diagnosed. He had a grand mal seizure and was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor in May of 2008, just about 10 days before Ted Kennedy, who had the same thing. And our son had worked for the senator, and he came to me a couple of months later after my husband's craniotomy. He said, you know, Mom, Ted Kennedy and Dad were always on their cell phones. And I just, I couldn't believe it. I was just astonished and I said oh my gosh this just can't be with all the people using cell phones I think this just the the number now is something like five or six billion people in the world are using cell phones including children so I started researching it a couple of years ago and I was shocked to find what I found there were many fine studies that had already proven that long term or well ten years of cell phone use held to the side of the head ipsilateral use for just an hour a day, you had a significantly significantly increased risk of brain tumor, specifically a glioma or an acoustic neuroma. And both the, the Senator Kennedy and your husband yes, had this. Yes, they had the same, yes. And so I reached out to the researchers, the doctors, the scientists all over the world, and they did get back to me and they said, yes, your husband is the poster boy for this link between cell phone use and brain tumors. And I couldn't keep quiet. I, I, I couldn't, I just, I couldn't keep quiet about it. It's, our family has been destroyed by it. My husband's tumor was in his right frontal lobe and he had personality changes for years prior to the seizure. And this thing was growing for probably about 10 years. He used his cell phone for about 20 years. And I started speaking out. I actually went to Congress a few, week, few months later um, after Congress, we were on the Dr. Oz show, I've been on Larry King Live, and unfortunately with all of this, people have come to me. And Aaron Brockovich is somebody that you Aaron Brockovich, come to know too. Actually, it was Susan's idea that I contact mm -hmm. her, and I did. I sent her an email, and she got back to me. And she she was helpful. And Didn't you say that she said you, you were her hero? Yes, she did. I know you're too modest yes, to say yes. that, but to be Aaron Brockovich's <laughs> hero. Yes, that made me feel great, yes. Um, so anyhow, what's happened though, which is very frightening to me and, and just horrible, is that many people, including people in their late 20s, are dying or already dead from their cell phone use. And the our government is far behind other countries in warning the citizens of the United States that this is a real problem. There is conclusive evidence. If you hear otherwise, it's the industry who is feeding that to the public. And brain tumors are on the rise. And you said that the uh, phone manufacturers themselves put warnings in teeny, teeny, teeny little letters. Yes. Tell, tell us about yes. that, please. Um, we were in Maine recently trying to get some legislation passed there on this, and the 24-year-old son of a man who had died from this, a 50-year-old Fresno State football coach, 
his son was testifying and he held up his iPhone manual and he said in print that I can't even read with perfect vision it tells me in this book that I sh in order to adhere to the FCC guidelines one must never hold this to their head or body. Can you please tell me why? So an, a, not only an iPhone but right. any, all phone manufacturers in, have this in warning. In newer user guides, mm -hmm. yes. In the iPhone, the Blackberry, the Motorola, yes. They're all similar. Some say mm -hmm. to keep it a half an inch away from your head or body at all times. Some say an inch. So yes, it's out there. However, the CTIA, the Wireless Association, is denying this and there's a lot of internal bickering going on between the FDA, the FCC, the cell phone industry. So what happened in San Francisco was exciting and I'm proud to have been a part of it and Mayor Newsom is terrific. He, he stood up to industry. Industry threatened a lawsuit in Maine and we did not get the legislation done there. Industry threatened a lawsuit in California. Senator Mark Leno, Leno had brought this to the, to the legislators in California and industry threatened a lawsuit and it did not get done. This was about a month ago. And the same thing happened in San Francisco. The industry was threatening to sue and Gavin Newsom stood up to them and said, I'm not for sale. He said, I firmly believe in this and we got the legislation passed. It was a lot of hard work. It took us about seven months and it, it's, it's terrific. It's a step in the right direction. And okay. industry was there and they tried fighting it in person and they took out full page ads in the San Francisco Chronicle fighting it and no I, you have to you have to tell uh, what you did you and Alan were in the city for your 30th oh, wedding 30? anniversary yeah. and when the, the Chronicle took out a full page ad right we the um, final board the full board full board of supervisors was meeting on June 8th to vote on it was the final vote for the legislation it was called the right to know ordinance Basically what it is, is that the consumer has the right to know the amount of radiation being emitted from their cell phone. So we were staying in the city for a couple of nights for our anniversary and we were going to go to the hearing. And I opened up the San Francisco Chronicle the morning of our anniversary. They had left it at our door and in the first section there was a full page ad taken out by the CTIA, the Wireless Association, saying cell phones are safe with a picture of a nurse with her stethoscope holding the cell phone to her head and saying that the FCC and the NCI and the ACS are all saying that they're safe and it's not completely true. The FCC has posted precautions on their website. So Alan and I went and bought, I think it was something like 14 Chronicles and we took, sat on the steps of City Hall and we put our comments on this ad and I had the briefing book that um, some of my colleagues and I had written for the legislators and we went and delivered it to all the offices and told them that it was our 30th anniversary and it might be our last and because he has it, he's dying from a brain tumor from his cell phone use and that's how we spent our 30th anniversary mm -hmm. and we think that we made an impact because we did win by a vote of 10 to 1 so we're well, happy about it and we hope that it spreads throughout the nation because people need to know this is a, a serious problem. This could be the largest cover-up in world history. And, and also, Ellie, mm -hmm. you know that there was no pre-market testing yes. of cell phones. Yes, which is, yes, that's where the corruption started. Um, cell phones were introduced to the marketplace in the United States in 1983, and the FDA said that they did not need to be pre-market safety tested because they were the same as a microwave oven. And the man who was responsible for that within the FDA went to work for Motorola a couple of months later. Mm -hmm. So that's where the corruption started and it hasn't stopped since. Mm -hmm. And that's what was so powerful, not just that the SAR, the specific absorption rate, is going to be posted at the point of sale, which is good, but more powerful to what happened in San Francisco is that Mayor Newsom and the, and the Board of Supervisors stood up to a four trillion dollar industry who is not being honest mm -hmm. with the public, mm -hmm. and this could be a, this could be a pandemic. I have one colleague who's done ran the numbers on this, and he thinks that we're looking at about 500 million brain tumors from cell phones within the next 15 years. Wow. Well, if people want to learn more, they can follow um, our uh, series in the Rancho Santa Fe News, and uh, in which we're uh, quoting you further. So thank you very much. That's terrific. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course I know